the anointing that breaks the yoke. Father, we ask for your bread today, your daily bread, your word from heaven, God. Not, we're not, we don't want to be ear tickled, God. We don't want to be lied to. We don't want to be manipulated, God. We don't want to be, we just want you to move on our heart. We don't want to hear what man has to say. We want to hear what your word has to say. We don't want to hear what religion and denominations have to say. Father, we don't want to be deceived by our own mind, our own hearts, our own concept of how we see or perceive the word of God. Let it be clearly like black and white what you see and show us, God. Father God, let us have the fear of the Lord, God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom because let us not be foolish in these last days to, to walk on our own path or to create our own gospel or, or follow those that, that are promising us uh, prosperity, lies, and all these different things that we come to Jesus for any other thing, but we come to Him because of our wretched soul that needs, needs to be saved, and then we follow Him. We, we are converted. And then he sends the comforter in that conversion to help us along the way. But the problem is many of us live grieving the Holy Spirit the whole time, even when we get him. And then you don't feel the benefits of the joy of your salvation. The joy of our salvation comes through obedience. And he only asks us to do things that we, we're able to handle. He said, I, come to me, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. He never asks us to do something that we're, we're, we're incapable of doing. Or he'll ask us to do something that we only can do it with his power or his anointing. But he still is going to do it for us. He's never going to ask us to do something that we're not capable of doing. And then what does he do? He rewards us with his presence, with his anointing, with his power. And no, yeah. We're all going to struggle in, our, in, in these little things in life. He's not looking at that. He's not counting all the mistakes. He's counting how, how much you're trying to fulfill what He's asking you to do. And that, that's where we get the oil. This message is called Worthy. Because the Lord was speaking to me, and many try to come under the gospel of of. of you know, we're all worthy, going to be worthy because of Him. We all got crowns because of Him. But He also said a whole bunch of other things in the Gospel and in the Scriptures. And if we just take our own concept of our own kind of um, Gospel in our mind, there's no way we're going to be set free. There's no way we're going to be able to stand in the end. There's no way we're going to really be able to follow Him because we're following a lie. Because the Gospel has power, and the Gospel is the cross and the, and, and the gospel is us picking up our cross. So you can't have his cross unless you tell him you'll take yours. Jesus died on the cross and he said, if you want to follow me, deny yourself and pick up your cross. See, they don't preach your cross. Everybody in the false grace and the, and the church of, of self-indulgence and the, and the, the American gospel of, of me, myself, and I, all it's doing is making us fat and making us lazy, and making us think that we just picked the right religion, and oh God, for us, too bad for the others that have are following these false religions. But the Bible is clear that many are going to be deceived with these yeah. gospels, and then men drawing people unto themselves, worthy. So what is Jesus saying when he said worthy? <coughs> This is what we need to be preaching all the time. What? It keeps us in check what we're supposed to do. So when things get worse than that, we're there with Jesus. Everybody wants to say, well, when things get bad, um, and things get really bad in America, then, you know, then I'll get serious. But you, you're not going to have the foundation in your heart and the foundation in your life to even be able to, to, be able to start to follow Him. That's what the, the whole parable about the ten virgins with the oil means. Don't, don't wait till the last minute to get your oil. You need to start getting it the minute you get saved. But they lie to you, and then, oh, they're even lying. You say, well, you'll be just taken out of here. You don't have to worry about anything. It has to do with, that's such the biggest lie from the pit of hell, too, because that throws away half the book of Revelation. That's right. Throws away half the book of Daniel. So if we don't get these idols and, of, of all these things out of our heart now, we're not going to be able to get them out in the last minute. And Jesus said, if you know when I was coming, just like if you know your house is going to be robbed, at midnight, you wouldn't wait till 1 o'clock in the morning to come home. Right. You'd be there at 11.30 with a shotgun, waiting for the person. 
And he says we need to be alert all the time in these times because just the same. But the devil will tell you to go follow your own dreams, put on that, and give you uh, um, all these messages of motivation. I'm telling you, the only motivation is he fights for us, and the motivation that we need is to pick up our cross, because when we do that, we're hidden in Christ. Amen. So they want to do everything just like the world does, and their own ambitions of their own power and their own strength. That is pride. The problem is they want to create their own righteousness, but the problem is that we have His words. His words are pretty much documented, so if we follow Him, one of the things He said is, if we want to save our, if you want to see, if you seek to save your life, you'll lose it. But if you lose your life, you'll save it. It's very simple. That's another foundational thing of the gospel. And he doesn't say he doesn't want to get, because he says, I give you life and more life more abundantly. Uh, peace, joy, and, peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Ghost. And he gives us wealth. He gives us other things too, whatever. We're not, but we're not, people want to make those the targets of following Jesus. But the target of always following Jesus is, God, will I be found worthy? When you come. Right. Revelation 5. And I saw on the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and the backside sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals? Thereof. And no man in heaven or on the earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders said to me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the book. And to loose the seven seals thereof. And behold, and lo, in the midst of the throne were the four beasts, in the midst of the elders stood the lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns, seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God. And if you go and look at that in Isaiah, the seven spirits of God, one is the fear of the Lord, one is the uh, wisdom and revelation, one is the spirit of truth, and... The other is, um, I don't know, there, but there's seven of them, I don't know, right off the bat. And, it's, it, and it says, goes through, and then, and then there are other scriptures said that God's going, and you know that His throne has wheels in Ezekiel, so He's traveling all around, but you know the Spirit's like the wind. Anyway, we can get into all those things, but then all the religious people are going to start scratching it. What is He talking about? But basically... He's spirit. He's not even on a throne or wheel. All these things are for us to understand and to see and know God and know His heart. And to see Him, because you can't see a spirit, but you can see Him if He... That's why Jesus spoke parables, so the scriptures can come alive and that we can follow them and understand the ways of the kingdom. Because you can't even see the kingdom. The kingdom is not by observation either. His kingdom, you can't see it, but it's within you. And Jesus now is the kingdom of God. Yes. And we go into Christ. Yes. And we become one with the kingdom of God. Yes. Heaven is a place, but it really... Heaven is God. Right. Heaven is the being with God. It's like Jesus goes, I go to prepare a place for you, but... And, and, and it's a kingdom, but it's not... God doesn't come up as a man anymore. It, it, you're in Him. So, you live in Him, you breathe in Him, you have your life in Him, and right now, Jesus said to do that with Him. So, basically, it said that the light is His glory, and His presence, and the closer we get to Him, the more ama amazing it is, and, then, and it's so, you can't even try to understand these things. So, the things that are written in the Bible to make us understand, and to have hope, for the glory that shall be revealed in us and in the end of the age. That the, that the suffering of this present world aren't, isn't even going to be compared to that glory. So all these things that are written for us to understand and to see and to seek and to know. 
that He has good things planned for us. He says you, there, that those that love Him, really good things. And the book was taken, and the book of the four beasts and the twenty. Okay, and they sung a song, and they said, "Well, and, and having every one of them harps and vials and odors and prayers of the saints." And they sung a new song, saying, Who is worthy to take the book, to open the seals, and was slain and redeemed us by the blood of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. And I behold and heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beasts and the elders, and the number of of them was ten thousand times ten thousand and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth, and you know, such are the sea and all in them, heard and saying blessing and honor and glory and power for under him sitteth upon the throne, the Lamb, forever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty-four elders fell down and worshipped Him that lived forever and ever. So what is He going on when He tells us these things in the Scripture? What is He talking about? Because all through the Scripture says, you need to be worthy. But we know we can't be worthy because it's His blood that makes us worthy. We can't die on the cross because we're sinners. We can't uh, get salvation through works because it's through faith alone that we're saved. So we got to understand by the mind of Christ what's going on and then to follow that. Because people want to take things by the letter of their own carnal mind and make their own understanding that makes the gospel without any power. Makes the gospel without the cross. Their own cross. And it says in verse, now in chapter uh, Luke 21, I'm going to jump down to 13, speaking about all the, the, the things before that. And then he goes in there, should turn a testimony, set it before the hearts and meditate thereon. Verse 15, for it give the mouth of wisdom. So when they're taken up, all these things are going to happen. So if you're so embedded in the world and so connected to the world, when those things, you're not going to be able to, 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 to come out of the world. When these things come down, that's going to be one thing, because he said, if you deny me, he'll deny you. Then it talks about all the hairs on our head and all these different things. And he says to flee. And then he, and then he, then he goes and says, and, and woe to them or would child. So he's talking about the end. And verse 24 it says, and, um, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword, led captivity captive. So if we're taken out of here, who's going to be... Who's going to be led to the sword? And who's going to be led into captivity? Who's going to be the witnesses on the earth? It's the two witnesses. Is the is is the Jew and Gentile the one man with the oil and the fire of God? The fire of God is is the word of God. Everyone thinks some dragon is going to come from heaven and start blowing fire on people. I believe with all my heart. It, Jeremiah says, "Isn't my word like a fire? Isn't my word like a hammer that breaks the heart?" So the word of God is a fire, and the Holy Spirit is considered fire. So we need the revelation of all these things. And the sign of the sun and the moon and the stars upon distress. Men's hearts failing them for fear. Yeah. And looking for those things which are coming on the earth. Now I'm going to skip down all the way down to 36 because of all this scripture here. And it says, this generation shall not pass away. In verse 32, then verse 30. Watch therefore and always pray that you will be count worthy. So watching and waiting and praying that you'll be found worthy. So then, even to be found worthy, you need to be in a relationship to be watching and praying. So you're not watching your business, you're on to God's business. So this is another key right there. Then he's saying watching and waiting. So it's a lifestyle of being at his feet. A lifestyle of being having your ear inclined to what he has to say. So there's a connection. At the end, you'll find out it's all about a connection. When he comes, are you connected to him, or are you so connected to yourself and your own things? That's why he says even to forsake the father, mother, brother, sister, and it's not worthy of him to put them first before him, which he gave us. He, he wants to have us to have everything he gave us, but he doesn't want the things that he gives us to replace him. 
So he said, the teaching in the temple, night and day, verse 37, and they call on the mountain, and he says, who, who will, okay, 36, worthy to escape all these things before. So we have to be found worthy to escape them, but he's worthy, and only he is worthy. There's nothing we can do. There's no, not one good on the earth but him. And the people came early in the morning to the temple to hear him. And so the people think that they can walk without submitting to the Holy Spirit and to His will. This is the bread of deception. This is what the church is if I just go to a building or read a scripture or believe that, he, that I'm going to die and go to heaven. That's not good enough according to all that we read. I, I, before I really follow the Holy Spirit, but that was good enough. That got me saved. Faith got me saved. And there's nothing I can do to, to save myself. He did it all. But there's things that I have to do to keep me walking with Him. Amen. Because the devil's there every single day trying to get in the middle of me and my father's relationship. Amen. Through temptation of vices, through people, through all types of things, distractions. So that's what he does all the time. He is in the business of distracting us from what is important. And he'll offer you what you think is more important. He'll, he'll tempt you with what the desires of your heart are. He knows them too. Because before we're sanctified and things are burned out of us, we desire them more than spiritual things. So Paul says that we, we have to be trained up to, to, to be spiritual beings. It just doesn't happen overnight. That's right. And that's what... This whole thing is. That's why we're here today. To be reminded of the promises. To be reminded of the things Jesus said. Because it ain't going to be the devil reminding you. And, and if you're hearing your own things, the Holy Spirit, you're going to stop hearing the Holy Spirit because other things are going to drown it out. So God's inclining our ear that we hear His voice and the voice of a stranger we will not follow. He says if we're His sheep, we don't follow wolves and we don't follow the devil but the devil's already there trying to distract us to follow him through temptations this spirit will is the bread of deception we find even in the scriptures where it says even the elect would be deceived the elect are 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 those filled with the holy spirit even the the remnant the people that, that aren't considered the, the crowd of Christianity. The people would be deceived if God didn't straighten days. That's how strong deception is. And we think just because we picked Him and we say a prayer at dinner or, or, or on holidays that we're, and we don't live for Him 100%, that we won't be deceived because we chose Him. That is a big deception. He doesn't want that. And right now, if, if, if it doesn't come to the end, you might slide in. But the thing is, the devil doesn't say, oh, okay, they're saved now, I'm going to leave them alone. What he actually does is say, oh, they got saved. I'm not going to mess with the people that are already serving me and following me because then I might push them to Jesus. I'm going to make their life maybe a little bit easier. Let me try to get these Christians to serve me. Let me try to get these Christians to not want to pray. Let me try to get these Christians not to want to, 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 to go to the least of these and to to go to the prisons and, and go witness and go to church and hear the Word of God. Let me just try to get these Christians to believe that all you had to do is say a prayer. So then, and let me get some people that are very charismatic and very uh, spiritual to get up there and present it like it's so good. And when you don't know the Bible, you'll believe anything they say. That's why God wants you to know the Word so someone can't stand up there and tell you half truth. That's really why. Amen. Because the more we know someone's preaching the truth, we can maybe relax a little bit, and that's what he wants. Because people in the old, in the book of Acts church, they didn't have to say, well, it's Paul. They just believed and followed, and they were okay. But so many people don't even know who's who anymore because they're so far away from the Word. And they don't even know the Holy Spirit. So whatever moves because of their denomination, it's the devil. Well, God moves first. He, the devil's a counterfeit. Yes. And the devil will copycat things that the Holy Spirit's yes. doing. So you need to bear witness with your spirit. Right. 
So we're going to see what Jesus said and also said about working out our own salvation with fear and trembling. So there's some type of things that we have to do for salvation. Not to be saved, but to continue in our relationship with Him in a healthy manner. I can be an unhealthy, dead Christian. I can be a Christian that's very weak all the time. That's not a healthy relationship. Where's the righteous are bold as a lion. The, right. the saints are supposed to be the head and not the tail. Right. We're supposed to be uh, subduing uh, other kingdoms and taking, uh, delivering people and breaking yokes all the time. Every single believer has some level of anointing. If we're in relationship with the anointed one. Because we're now his. That's why they, the name got birth. Jesus didn't say you will be Christians. People that figured out in the book of Acts, they began to call them Christians because they actually look like the one they follow. In today's church, we look like the world. So how are we supposed to be? If you really want to be a Christian, it isn't by name, it's by what we look like. If, if I, you know, somebody, you know, different, you know, somebody that's, um, an Indian, you know he's an Indian because he looks like one. You say, no man, that person's not an Indian. He's got feathers, or you can do the other Indian too. He's got that, he's got a tomahawk, he's very tan, and he's got the nose, and this tastes like, no man, he was born in, in uh, Poland. Okay. He'd be like, no dude, that guy's an Indian. And you're like, no, no. And But the guy was born in India, in, in, in America, whatever, and whatever, maybe in Chile or whatever, because American were, were all some, everything else, but anything out of the sun here, but it, it, back and forth, so they pushed him down, but whatever. And uh, he got taken as a little baby and grew up in, uh, <coughs> in, in Europe, <coughs> and nobody told him. So all his life, he, he thought he was something else, but he didn't look that and people say oh yeah he is you'd be like and that's what i think people think about christians nowadays did you catch that yeah. no you didn't <laughs> okay because you're not living in the kingdom you're not you might have been born there and you might have all but you don't look like it anymore because you look like your surroundings yeah. Remember, John the Baptist even said he wasn't even worthy to tie Jesus' shoes. So how are we going to be worthy of anything, right? So we gotta we got to go into the heart of the Holy Spirit. we got to find out, well, what the heck is he talking about? Because I know people are doing everything, and they're sinning, or other people, and then these false grace people say, oh, you're, you're worthy. And you're like, no, God wants you to repent. Because he's worthy, and if you don't repent, you're separating yourself from him. So what is worthy? Compared to the adjectives, the worthy or supplicant, adjective worthy is. So having, showing the qualities and the ability of recognition, specified way. Virtuous, good, moral, ethical, principled, high principled, high minded. Well, maybe we can say to be worthy of Him, you better be kingdom-minded. You better have the mind of Christ then, right? Maybe that's what He's told us. It says, have this mind in you that is also in Him. Right. People just think, oh, God just injected the mind of Christ. <laughs> they, all they do is read the newspaper. And, you know, their, their, their books on um, philosophy and these things of the world and all the things that in, in, in entice them. And, 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 you know, encyclopedias and... And um, all those other types of books that give you all this knowledge about the world, but you ain't going to be learning about the kingdom. And you think you're going to have the mind of Christ. It doesn't work that way. Upright, upstanding, righteous, solid, decent, law-abiding, law honest, honorable, respectable, respected, vernable, reputable, trustworthy, trust, trusted, reliable, dependable irreproachable, blameless. But it's funny that all in the New Testament, God starts to expect us to do all these things. But everybody wants to be counted worthy because of His blood. 
Now, there's nobody worthy to take the seals. There's nobody worthy to do that. That's why God sent His Son. This is a different thing that we're talking about. Well, what God's trying, and what Jesus and what the Holy Spirit's trying to tell us is we have to be in relationship. We have to follow His Word, and we have to let Him circumcise our heart completely. And this is only a holy work that can't be seen in the natural. And you can't do it in a day. It's through relationship with the glory, with holiness. It's about being set apart. Holiness is just set apart. There's no one holy. But the more we get set apart, the more holy we are. And this is where all the problems lie. Because all these Christians go through all of these, um, all these things. You know, we all go through them when we're baby Christians. But when we're growing up, like, wait, things... Don't get easier in the sense of the world, the persecution, all that. But things get easier in our, in, of our knowledge. And the desires of what used to entangle us stop yes. entangling us to the level that you used to. Right. We, be, we were being set free. Free. Right. free. Set free, actually. <laughs> and if somebody wants to go to, to one deliverance session, <laughs> some, some big name minister, and get their hands laid on and think their whole life's going to change. But if you go home and you pick up the encyclopedia, you pick up a money magazine, and you pick up this, and all that again, all you're doing is going back to the vomit. So you have to be in relationship with the Word, and no much more than the Word inside of us. So, basically I can give a definition of being worthy is being in, in relationship with Holy Spirit when, when, when Jesus breaks, breaks the sky. Praise God. Through the sky, the cliff splits the sky, right? And it says to have, to claim, to be qualified. and So we know nobody qualifies us to get to the Father but Jesus. But what qualifies us to be found worthy? Because we're already, salvation only comes through, through belief in Him. And there's nothing we can do in our own flesh that any man should boast. So everyone takes that and they worship that. Yeah. I don't have to do nothing. That would be pride. Yeah. And that's been the big thing that God's like, it's not pride. It's telling you, don't even think you're anything special. But now surrender all of your heart, all of your mind to me. And that's what it's always been. And this is what we need to hear. So we're reminded, and as I'm preaching, God's showing us areas and things that He wants not to be ahead of Him. And then He starts to give us all the things that we desire. He said that He gives us the desires of our heart. And the thing is, if, if of our heart has to be his heart to get the desires of it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Then he says, also it says about who will be found worthy unto death. What do you mean he already died for us? But there's going to be martyrs in the last day. Yeah. And if you say, I'll take the mark, you're not worthy. So if God is preparing us to become witnesses, which is martyr means we... Don't count our life greater than the hope. We don't count this world greater than the world the eternity. And if that's not embedded in us and trained, if we, I mean, you can't do it in your own religiosity. There's no way to do it without the power and the submission of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So that's what God wants us to, and He doesn't want us to beat it down. This is about, this is nothing to do with the law. Because the law has to do with everything with the flesh. This has everything of submission to the power of of the unknown. Yes. It has nothing to do with the flesh. But your flesh comes under submission to His grace. And His grace is the empowerment to become something that you can on your own accord. Amen. So it's His grace that makes us the sons of God. You, and, and His grace came through the cross. Yes. But we cannot do it in our own thinking, our own mind. There's, there's a process it's called the fire of God. That's right. It, it, and, and it's all in the scriptures. So Revelation 12, 10 through 11 says, And I heard a loud voice of heaven, and now is to come, and salvation, strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of His Christ. For the accuser of the brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Well, God's saying, The accuser accuses us, but when we know who we are, we have our identity, and when basically you don't give them any ammunition to accuse you, you stop living in condemnation. Right. So when you're living in holiness and walking in righteousness, 
Amen. He can accuse you and you'd be like, what are you talking about? Right. I'm righteous. What are you talking about? Amen. I'm not stealing, lying, fornicating. So it's like, Amen. then he gets shut up. It's like he'll accuse you. Cause, but the thing is, when we do those things, we believe him because we're guilty. So that's when, that's when Jesus says, run boldly to the throne of grace in time of need. Because his blood is always there for us yes, to right. get back in right relationship with him. Amen. Till we get to the place of maturity where we stop stumbling in the dark once in a while. Because a righteous man, because we're already righteous by the blood of Jesus. We have the breastplate, but a righteous man falls seven times. Yes, yeah. So what do you mean? A righteous man will fall until he's actually walking in righteousness, but he's still righteous. A righteous man falls seven times. Doesn't It's not the seventh time that makes you righteous. It's the talk and the walk about being in relationship with God. But then you get tired of being grieved in the Holy Spirit where you say, you know what? There's nothing better than your presence. And there's nothing better than your power. And there's nothing better than me submitting to the government of God, to the body of Christ, submitting one to another. And God, so many people in the body of Christ want to do their own thing. They have their own ideas all the time. And God calls them... Uh, renegades, and they're all over Facebook, and they, but they're always in lack, they're always not being delivered, because God has a way, and they overcome by the blood of the Lamb, and the word of their testimony, said they love not their lives unto death, there is right there another key to, we have to live his life for us, not our own. That's why I can't hear about finances and money. Every day I go to some church. I'm going to end up seeking that, thinking that's what God wants for me. When He doesn't need me to seek that, He has all the cattle on all the hill. I mean, why would I seek something that He's He has? I mean, He He, he can go, and God can wave His hand, I don't know whatever, breathe or speak it, and He can give you a bag of gold right on your dresser when you get home. Because he put it in a fish's mouth to show his glory and who, right. the power that he had. Just so happened. He said, oh, we need tax money. Oh, my God, now we're going to do Okay. All right, disciples, we've all screwed up. We weren't saving our taxes. We all were going to, you know, we're working. Peter, you're a fisherman. You're doing this. And the other guy's doing this. Stop the ministry. Let's all go to get a part-time job real quick so we can get our life in order. Because they're going to arrest us and we can't preach the gospel. No, what did he say? He said, go cast your rod in, yeah. catch the first fish, yeah. and there will be a gold coin. And you know what? If they say, Jesus said, if they say, I owe taxes, pay mine and yours too, and be done with the world. <laughs> but we want to go seek our own strength, our own wisdom, how we're going to get rich, how we're going to help God out. Yeah. Oh, God, let me help you in missions. And this is what everyone says. God, you make me a millionaire. I will so in But God's like, you're not even giving anything now. What do you think you're going to do? God says, you're, you, though who is not faithful in the least is not faithful. So he's like, uh-huh. And he's like, so you, so we get all these fantasies, and then we, we, we equate them in our heart, justify our greed using the kingdom of God. It's called manipulation. And we try to manipulate God like he doesn't know what's in our heart. People do it all the time. I hear it all the time. Man, I know it's trouble, but... But, but when God does this, I'm going to do that. And God's saying, no, no, when you do this, then I do that. You're not God, I am. So, he goes and gets it and he pays, he, pay, he pays the taxes and they're on their way. Today, we go, oh, i got to get out of there, i got to do this. And God's like, do my kingdom, do what I tell you to do. And all that stuff starts to work out. It's what's first in your life, what's in your mind. So the gospel tells us this. So we don't seek anything but Him. That's right. It says in Revelation 3, unto the wise, a church of Sardis, these things say unto you that have the seven spirits of God and the seven stars, I know your works. So they got the Holy Spirit. And you have a name that you're alive, but you're dead. How can you have the Holy Spirit die? Because you stopped submitting to Him, you stop following Him, you stop st stirring up the gifts, and you started to live for the world again, and the world's dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things that remain ready to, that are ready to die. I have not found your works perfect before God. Remember therefore what you have received and heard, and hold fast and repent. Therefore thou shalt 
not watch. I will, if you don't watch, I will come as a thief in the night, as, uh, as that, and thou shalt know, you shall not know what hour I, shall not know what hour will I come upon thee. Now it's funny, everybody says, nobody knows the day or the hour. This is true, but it's not true. Because God does nothing before He reveals to His servants His prophet. Then He also says that as a fig tree and all these demonstrations is about. So He gives us all these things where we can know when it comes. No one knows it now, but when it's coming closer, we should know it because we're in a relationship with Him. So if you're going to have a baby, you know when uh, you might not know when that baby's coming out. God knows, but. When, that, when you're in labor and, and all of a sudden you're getting more contraction and everything, you say, well, it's going to be really soon. And it's like, and all of a sudden it's going to be like, it's coming now. And that's how, because it's part of you. That's right. And Jesus is going to be birthed into yeah. the world and he should be part of us. So as we're in relationship with him, we should know other things. And also, the closer we get, he'll start giving dreams and everything. Because Jesus didn't know as a man, but I bet you he knows all things now because he's with the Father. And he's the one that's coming back. So sure enough, Daddy's saying, and they're one, so he's talking to himself and saying, you're getting ready to go. Get ready. Get off the... You better get up. Get your shoes on because you're... Get your horse. So he's going to know closer when he's getting on that horse. Everyone that's connected to him, if you're seated with him, you better be getting on the horse with him. Found worthy to works before God. Now remember, thou shalt watch and come to thee as a thief. And thou hast a few names in Sardis, and have not defiled the garments, and shall walk with me in white. For they are worthy. Wow, he just said they're worthy, but no, there's no one other worthy. You got to know by the Spirit. They are worthy. He that overcame the world, he that overcomes, the same shall be clothed in white. And I will not blot out his name. Wow, so your name was written in the lands of light, and it might be blotted out. Yeah. And I will not blot out your name. There goes once saved, always saved on the drain. Another thing, because <laughs> once saved, always saved. You're not really saved until you're with them in the end. Amen. Yeah. Because you can take the mark of the beast and, and, and be in some religion your whole life. doesn't make you saved. It's the blood, it's being born again. Yeah. But when you're born again, you'll never... You'll never really walk away from him, or you'd be really, unless you're walking away from him every day of your life. So we're walking with him and closer to him every day. There's a difference. The, these people are going that way, the crowd's going that way, and that way he says, broad is the way to destruction. And then he find it, he's talking to the people that were listening to his messages, and then he said, but narrow is the way, we're few there that find it. So the narrow way is the cross. And picking up our own, and denying ourselves, and being one step step with the Holy Spirit. Amen. He's going this way. It's not even it doesn't even have to be straight. But you said the Spirit of Elijah. God said the Spirit of Elijah will come in the last days, and He will send, this, and He will make every crooked way straight. Yeah. So the crooked way straight. It doesn't matter if you're going this way, and then the Holy Spirit going this way, and then you go that back that way. It's all straight if you're following His way, That's right. because He's wherever He goes, you go. Whatever he says, you say. And then if you're in a relationship with him, you'll know his voice when he says, when they take you before magistrates and all these things, I will give you the words to speak yes. at that time. Yes. And then it even goes on more things about that. It even goes to the message two weeks ago about this, this thing about out of, our, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Mm -hmm. Well, if, you're, if, the, if everything that's in you is the world, out of your belly will flow the stock market. Out of your belly will flow... <laughs> You know, all the signs and wonders and all the, all the fear that everyone's speaking. But if, it's, if, if he's in your belly, he's not afraid. Yeah, that's right. Everyone's freaking out. All these videos that come by. If you watch that more than you read your word and you have faith, you're going to start getting into this uh -huh. thing about fear. Yeah. And you're going to think he's coming back next week. And <coughs> I, I was there five years ago. My God, thank goodness. And it was all good stuff. And it's exciting. But it's like none of that stuff even happened five years now. And now they're saying the same thing. Not saying that because they're saying the same, but they're saying they're going to start saying, "Well, where is his coming?" They've been saying and saying and saying. But those that are know him and with him, they don't need to hear he's coming. They know when he's coming. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Those.
who have ears to hear, hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. False grace wants you to eat the bread of deception because they're, they're tired of the cross. There's, when you want to live for yourself, the cross is heavy. Yes. When you're living for Him, He carries it for you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Watching wait. In Acts 5, it talks about being worthy to suffer shame for His name. There's all things about being worthy. Some people call and it bothers me. Oh, you're worthy. This person's lying, not following the Holy Spirit. And the people that get in false grace and don't want to pick up their cross anymore will tell everyone, oh, geez, you're worthy because they are not worthy anymore. So they're already convinced themselves, I can't do this, he's got to do it. But God's saying, you're not doing it, you're just obeying me and doing what I'm telling you to do. It's a big difference. Yes. The only one worthy we know is him. Now in Matthew 24, he speaks about all those things. I'm not going to read it now, but go read that before, later. We know it's by faith that we're saved and not by works. But the Bible says if they're if there's no works, then where is the proof of your faith, actually? And, and, and James says, if you say you have faith and not works your works, your, your faith is dead. So, so you can't go in your, the faith that got you saved your whole life. You've got to have faith in now. Right. I mean, I know he saved you, but do you believe he's going to show up for you today? Or are you going to get your head, are you going to take the mark of the beast? Do you believe that he's, he's, he's your God today, yesterday, and forever? He never changes? Or did he change because you changed and you stopped following him? Thank you, Lord. Because the devil will make you think he changed. Thank you, Jesus. But he doesn't change. He really doesn't. We change. Yes. But he wants us... We change and we change ourselves, or we change and we're being changed from glory to glory and faith to faith. Yes, hallelujah. Someone's always changing. And if you're staying the same, you, you're still changing. You just don't know it. So, the Bible says that works is the proof, and then it says our works then are the proof that we really don't have faith. So if we believe, we pray. Yes. If we have faith, we obey the word. Because yes. if you have faith in him, you're going to believe what he said. Yes. So it all works together kind of, but they'll tell you, oh, just believe in Jesus, and they'll bring the scripture. It's by faith in, in him. Oh, yeah, of course. There's nothing I can do. His blood does it, but, but my lack of faith can get me believing something else. So today, let's see what the Master says. We know our salvation is, 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 is by faith and not by works. But we know without, without the works, without that, our works is dead. Or our faith is dead without the works. So, what does the Holy Spirit mean? That's what we need to come to. This is our job, is to come in agreement with the whole Bible. What is the Holy Spirit saying, and what is He saying now? Jesus, Jesus clearly said this about being worthy. He said, if any man follows me and wants to come after me, and does not, this is before he went to the cross. Yeah. <laughs> and, and So you got to remember, uh, Paul was talking a lot about after math of the cross too. Jesus was, was saying, before he even went to the cross, you're going to have to do what I do. Yeah. If you're going to follow me, you're going to have to die for me. If you're going to have, if you're going to follow me, you're going to have to love like me. If you're going to follow me, you're going to have to look like me. And if you're going to follow me, you're going to have to pick up your cross too. It might not look like my cross. Your cross might not look like Jesus' cross. Jesus' cross was literally, literally beaten rejected, persecuted, and hung on the cross. But he says the, the basic thing about the cross is not the cross in itself, it's the denying of oneself. Amen. Your cross might be, you can't work at that place, and you better obey Him. Mm -hmm. And there's twice as much money than the other place He wants you to work at. And when you do that, that's you're picking up your cross, because yeah. you're following Him. And he didn't say that was easy, but when you do it, the benefits come with it. The glory came after yeah. the decision. <laughs> Jesus swept blood in the garden before he ever got the glory. Yeah. Jesus denied, him, denied his own will in the garden before he ever died on the cross. Yeah. Showing that it wasn't even easy for him when he was preparing himself his whole life. Yeah. So we just think we can pick a religion and 
read a few scriptures and don't wonder why the devil's eating our lunch half the time. Because we need to get in relationship with the power that and be hidden in Christ where the devil won't even see us when God doesn't want him to see us. Amen. And he'll pull you out of the cleft just to, when it's time to be seen because he's humbling you too. And then, and then, and then about the buffeting, there's so many things. And 500 messages there on CD, help yourself to them. There's a whole, they're all over there and on YouTube. This goes back 10 years of messages about the cross. So today we're going to see what he says. So, he said that. Who does not pick up his cross and come, is not worthy of me. So there's another sign. We get, oh, what's, what's my cross? Well, we got to basically look at it. Jesus is in the garden, says, Lord, take this cup from me. I don't want to do it. <laughs> and, but he says, but not my will, but your will be done. So basically... Making us worthy is doing what He wants and not what we want. That's right. What makes us worthy of Jesus is doing what He wants and not what we want. It's not any works, it's obedience. And then He's like, I'm not going to give you more than you can handle, but I'm not going to... But you're going to be able to handle it, but you're not going to like it sometimes. Not true. But they don't preach that gospel, because that's what people run by hundreds to get saved. That's right. Oh, God, you know, heaven... Doesn't, but it doesn't say, talk about the gospel. And the gospel is good news. We are heading for hell. And he stopped those plans and gave us eternal life. It's great news. And his yoke is easy and we'll never thirst again. It's all that. Eventually when he trains us up, all of it becomes natural. Then we're manifesting Christ. Jesus didn't have a bad day ever he had days that he struggled with pers with love. He didn't struggle with it. He did it perfectly. But what I'm trying to say is that he his love was tested. You know, he wanted he could easily call down ten thousand angels and stop the crucifixion. He said, "I give my power over to you," and God says, "Now I want you to give your power over to me." So that's basically what 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 we're seeing right here is Jesus, when I'm saying having a bad day, he had days that his heart hurt, but he was confident. He didn't run and race and freak out to go raise Lazarus from the dead. He had confidence that his father would do it. Yes. And he got led himself to there where he would get the most glory. we got to understand that our whole life is for his glory too. Yes. Yes. And we want to speed it up. We want yes. ministry. We want this. we got to understand yes. everything is in Christ. If we walk with him, Everything that he wants to happen will happen. Yes. And I don't know what these people think. You can just conjure up some power and things happen. Mm -hmm. Religious always think, oh, like I got. It's all by done by him. So we want to see more, more of his power, but also he wants to keep you. So he might hold back some benefits of things because you're more important than losing you. Unless some people want to be lost for him, he'll give them over to that too. Because he said, you can do all these mighty things. And you say, I never knew you. Yeah. Depart from me. Work of iniquity. What do you mean, work of that? But we did this, this, and this in your name. Well, what is he saying? But you weren't picking up your cross. You did it for you. Mm -hmm. You did it for money. You did it for... That's the key. What are we doing anything for? It's got to be for him. That's what makes us worthy. Right. What we do is for him, not for ourselves. That's a big battle. Especially when he starts to give us the desires of our hearts. Make sense or no? Yep. It has to because it's the gospel. But if it doesn't, that means you're still struggling with yourself. So there's only one worthy in the book of Revelation. But what worthy is he wanting from us? And about, let's go to Matthew 10. Whosoever shall confess me before men, will my father confess me, my, my father will confess in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will my Father deny before my Father in heaven. Think not that I have come to send peace on the earth, but I come to send peace but a sword. For I have not come and set at variance against <coughs> variance against his father and the daughter against the mother and the daughter-in-law against the mother-in-law. If any man's foe, a man's foes shall be his own household. Your cross might be your family. 
He that loves father, mother, brother is not worthy of me. There it is again. Jesus first. There's a worthy that isn't about salvation. It's about identification. He that loves son and daughter more than me is not worthy of me. He that takes not his cross and follows after me is not worthy of me. Well, so when these people try to say, you're worthy and you're not following Jesus or picking up your cross, they're lying. Yeah. And false grace wants to tell you that every Sunday. Why they're trying to... Uh, and, and all week you're feeling bad and convicted and you go to church and, and you feel better about what you're doing wrong. That's not church. Right. That's not the anointing. Right. It should intensify and you should be running in where the power is for repentance. Right. Yeah. Big difference. I go now and I'm feeling horrible all week because I'm doing and I'm, I'm disobeying what my heart's telling me to do and I'm not picking up my cross. So I go turn on Joel <laughs> on TV and I... Listen for an hour and I feel better about it. There's a problem with that type of gospel. That's right. Because if you're feeling that way already, all you got to do is go to the throne of grace. Amen. All you got to do is repent. That's right. And joy comes in repentance. Yes, repentance is freedom. You can be free as a bird and then start to deny God and start to do your own thing and start to feel bound up and feel, feel that's, just feel lost. Then, when you're feeling that way, you need to identify where you got off track. And when you identify that, or God will, or ask Him and He'll eventually show you, that's called relationship. Sometimes it's not the devil, it's not demons, it's you. And you got to thank God that there's devils and demons messing with you now so you can get find out what the heck you did wrong. Because sometimes it's so subtle because we hear from lying preachers all these things that we think are okay. So what, what it does is we, we mask what's really right. That's why Paul and other ministers were so important about what you eat. Jesus said, what bread you eat must come from heaven, not from man. That's right. Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. Which is hypocrisy. So I'm telling you, there's Pharisees can look like the freest ones in the world, the biggest smile, everything's going right. But they're the biggest Pharisees. It doesn't have to be the law and beat you up with the word. It could be totally opposite. Give you everything. You have everything. False, false, false. But it, it what, what eventually does it sears your conscience and gives you a right and right mind. And that's not the gospel. So he says, pick up and follow after me. He and findeth his life shall lose, and loses his life shall find it. He that receives you receives me. Right there is the key. When you're picking up your cross, you're one with him. So when you go in his name with the cross, your identity's on the cross. When he died on the cross and you're crucified with him, you you are now crucified and risen with Christ. So that it's no longer you that live, but Christ. But if you don't follow him and his directions. You're, it's called rebellion. Yeah. And many are living in, in, in rebellion. So they find a gospel that will cater to the rebellion instead of submitting to the Holy Spirit. He that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he that receives a righteous man and shall, shall receive a righteous man's reward. Well, what's a righteous man's reward? Anybody know? What is the reward? Receive a prophet. Receive a prophet's reward. I'd say whatever the prophet says, and you want it. you got to receive it. If it's the truth, our reward is eternity. If it's prophet says, go dip seven times in the, in, in the dirtiest river, but, and relatives say, well, what are you talking about? I got a chlorinated pool right here. <laughs> this is what most Christians do they, they, and they want to do it their way yeah. I'm going to dip right here I dipped seven times but it's like he didn't do it his way That's right. I went there I spoke this, I said this I did this, we do it all the time but you didn't do it how he told us to do it That's a lot right. of us go do right. something but we do it without rebellion in our heart mm. that's how we give our finances we do it because we have mm. to and this guy's like yeah but it, it's not you're not really even getting the rewards of it because you're doing it because you have to. God wants you to do things because 
you want to, and because you love him. Receive a righteous man, receives a righteous man's reward. And whosoever shall give a drink unto these little ones, a cup shall no wise lose his reward. That's what Jesus said. Well, he's talking to people. He says, well, we went and he says, uh, when I was thirsty, did you give me a drink? They're like, when was he thirsty? Was it yesterday? They're like trying to figure out when, when you know, when Jesus was thirsty. He says, oh my God, I gotta maybe take a more of a, make, take notice of him more often. You know, bad armor bearer. Guy was thirsty, preached on the sermon night, didn't even give him a drink. And, and when I was hungry, did you feed me? And then he's, then, then he said, when I'm in, when I was in prison, did you? Oh my God, we're following a criminal. <laughs> and, like, and they're like, Oh my God. We all laugh, but we would have been that dumb too because they didn't have the Holy Spirit either. But mm -hmm. it is funny now because because Jesus told us the answer. But they're all looking at him like, and like, Oh my God. And and, and he said, What you done unto least these you done it unto me. And and it's like, What do you mean? Well, you got to have the Holy Spirit to understand that. Did you follow me into the darkness? Did you do what I'm telling you to do? Did you follow my voice? Are you, is your salt losing its saltiness, or are you being more salty? That's what he's... So being worthy means you're full of salt. You're not being spit out and lukewarm and, is, and spewed out of the mouth of God. That's why we need to be reminded of the fear of the Lord. But it's not like this. Everyone gets so mad when they hear all this, but this is what Jesus said. Why is it okay to read it, but we're not able to hear it from somebody else that's reading it and speaking it from God? Why is that? Because we have this fantasy how loving and kind and merciful Jesus is, so we read it, but we don't really perceive it. Because if we really perceived it, we'd be repenting more. So what false grace and these false gospels do is make us take the weight of the word off and then take the power off. Why do you think... I can preach, or someone else a message, and then someone else come up and nothing happens. Two people come up, and then somebody speaks the word of God, and half the place runs up for salvation. Because it's the Holy Spirit working with the Spirit in, in that person. It's the weight of the glory. It's the, it's the anointing and the calling through the truth. It's the uncompromising gospel. Paul didn't have a bad day. You're always going to have... People that don't want Jesus. But there's always going to be some people that do. And, and, if, and if basically, if all you have is two or three people, out of 5,000 you're preaching the gospel to, and it's always just two or three people, those are just two or three people, they might not even be getting saved, because the, the, the gospel is going to draw more and more people. Even the guy that was preaching all these years, and he didn't even move in the power, God was... Because of the denominations and all the walls and the religiosity, the power of the gospel was still moving. Mm -hmm. But it was only a little measure mm -hmm. of what God has in store. Because the book of Acts measure. And people would come down because the gospel brings conviction of our wickedness. The gospel brings a need for a savior. And if you promise people lies, the gospel doesn't move because God doesn't move on lies. When you try to explain everything by science, and that God doesn't move. When you try to speak to a million Hindus and try to explain to them that God's not dead and bring in all these facts, it sounds good in your carnal mind. It's like, well, that was really good. But nobody gets saved because you're trying to win people with your mind. And with your intelligence. And that's what's been, uh, these creeping spirits are up in the church. Like, And God's like, yeah, that's good. You know, you want to go talking. But I I'll tell you what. I can go to a, um, a big, um, if they let us in, a big university. And give my testimony. And preach the cross. And... They're either going to reject him or people are going to get saved. You don't have to prove nothing. Then God proves who he is. That's right. Still the work of the law, work of the flesh. You're trying to flesh it out because you think 
because you're offended at the cross and the gospel. It's offensive. So it says this, Matthew 22. The kingdom of heaven is like a certain man that made a marriage of his son, and he went and his servants to call, and were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. Again he sent his other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden that I have prepared my dinner, and my oxen and fatlings are killed, and all everything's ready. Some to the marriage, but they made light of it. He's talking about the end times. He's talking about going to his Jewish, the Jewish counterparts as well. And they went their way, one to his farm, another to his merchandise, and the remnant took and to and and, and the remnant took his servants and then treated them spitefully and slew them. But when the king heard, therefore he was so angry, he was wroth, and he sent forth the armies to destroy those murderers and burn up their city. And he said to his servants, The wedding is ready. We were talking about earlier, like we're going to know about what time it is. But they which were bid, were, means called, were not worthy. This is, they were called, the gods getting home, but they weren't worthy. Why? They didn't look like the, bro, the groom. Worthiness means you look like it. You want to know how I know? Because mm -hmm. when you went to a wedding, what they would do is they would, everyone would wear the, wear the same thing as the groom. Like the wedding garments. They had the garments. If it was all white, they'd all be wearing it and they'd all look alike. It's about revelation. It's yeah. about when you go there, do you look like him? Yeah. Or do you look like the devil? Well, if you look like the devil, he's going to take you, tie you, and say, you didn't, you didn't come in the right way. And he's going to, or you're not one of us because you got no oil. You don't look like him. I don't care. You said a prayer one day. He's talking about relationship. Every, and all these people are like, it's relationship. But they don't understand what a relationship is. It's co called covenant. Right. It's called everything is mine is yours and everything is yours is mine. And I can't withhold all mine and think you're getting it. And they withhold all theirs and thinking it's not co that's not covenant. That's called um, deception. So that's why we have all these things. So he said this. And he said, and the servants in the, which was, were not bidden were not worthy. Go therefore to the highways and byways and bid the marriage, and so those servants went out to the highways and gathered together as many as they found, bad and good. Yeah. Oh, wow, so there's bad and good in the church? <laughs> and the wedding was furnished with guests. Church was filled with people, mega church. Let's do a, you know, like that one guy made me, makes me, you see these people, they call themselves Christians, they go to these mega churches, but and they haul that, and then they make these movies and pour all these different things. And I think because they know T.D. Jakes, and they give money, and they, they think that they're saved. And they, they make uh, perverted movies, and they make, uh, they do, because you said, Jesus didn't say you'll know my, because of who you gave your money to, or what building you went into. He said, by the fruits. And many people believe that because of what they say they believe, and they bring up, but they, they curse them with their life, and they deny them by their works. So we got to understand this. This is not, it's like, oh, this is like, no one, like, understand, you, we need to explain the, the cross. So people, and you know what, some people love the cross. You're like, you know, I don't want some religion that's worthless. That's picking that. That's what they, you know, that's why so many people respect Muslims and, and, and them. Because, you know, they're deceived and all, but, my God. They're radical about it. Yeah. And God's like, wh wh why the heck aren't we radical anymore about what we believe and who we follow? Come on. Come on. Because when you're radical, you're going to disturb people. And they're going to want to kill you too. That's they're going right. to get you out of your cl your class. They don't want you to come. They're, you're going to fire you at your job. Because you're radical. The more you, you, you become a chameleon is when you're like, okay. Yeah. And that's called lukewarmness. And that's what yeah. God wants to get us from. And baptize us in the Holy Spirit and fire. So he said both bad and good to the wedding and the first of guests. And when the king came to see all the guests, he saw there was a man that had not on the wedding garment. He says, someone, he doesn't look like him. He says that the Bible says the fivefold minister has raised up the whole body of Christ and pulled in the full stature and the measure of Christ. It means, and we're made in the image of God. So basically what happens is God gives us the power to become the sons of God to where we actually look like Christians. So 
we have the word in us, so we start to look like what the word tells us to what. That's when we got the living epistle. Amen. You know, not some theologian telling you what what we should or shouldn't do, and what the Bible says and what it means, and you know about the ark they found and this, and, and then they found the scrolls and la la la. Big deal. Who cares? I know God's alive because I'm born again. Yes. You don't have to tell me about trying to prove Him. <laughs> what what God wants to get His glory is you look like Him. And when we look like Him, that's when we start running into persecution and trouble. Because then we start to sound like Him, and then when we speak like Him, we speak like one with authority, not like the scribes and the Pharisees that speak third-handly about some book. You know, I can buy a book about George Washington and find out everything about his life, study but he's been dead a long time. And I'll read that book back and forth, I can tell you, the wars he started, I can tell you what cities he walked in, I can tell you everything about him because of that book. Alright? Everything about him, and I can and I studied it for twenty years. I know Abraham I mean, I know what was it, George was it George George Washington, like the back of my hand. But you don't really know him because you never met him. And it's been so long ago that it was written about him, but the Holy Spirit reveals Jesus now. So, you might know all about him, but how many people made things up about him? That's what bothers me about, oh, Smith Wigglesworth did this, and he won't. You know what? We had things in jail. If I die, and the testimonies that come, when we walked in that prison, the Holy Spirit won all the women because it happened. Ten years later, because people love the idolized man, this group hot man, they, that was a revival, and they were in the jails, and all because some of the things you say, we, we've seen the same things. It'll be exaggerated. Oh, that guy Shane. One time he went to the city and there was he stopped the rain and crusade because it happened. Remember we, but it would be blown up and I'm, oh my god. And then he walked on the water <laughs> because that's what people do. And I guarantee you that a lot of that stuff was so true because God's using us. And it's, but we've things along the way because it, it's better. You know, you put a little spice on the story. So these stories and these things and begin to be greater. Then what it comes when we don't see those type of fruits and we don't see those benefits, we start beating ourselves up. But, but what God's doing is greater things. But why? If they were so amazing, how come that nobody wanted to go to their meetings when they were here on the earth? You know, they weren't allowed in the churches, so they had to get tents and stand on the corners because they were preaching the real gospel. That's right. The organized religion and the works of the Nicolaitans and the spirit of Balaam has been going on since the beginning of time. Yeah. God always pulls people out of a system and puts the Holy Spirit on them. It's the Holy Spirit that does the power. So, when we see this, we're going to say, well, it's funny, you worship these dead men, but you won't, you wouldn't, you, if they came back from the dead right now, you wouldn't let them in your church. Or you would because they're idols now, but before they weren't. Before they were the enemy. Because you were an enemy of the cross, and you still are an enemy of the cross. Because that's why I say if Isaiah showed up, John the Baptist showed up, um, uh, Samuel showed up, and, and you know uh, David showed up, and, and it said David's going to come and, to church, and he's going to do worship, and Isaiah or Ezekiel is going to speak today. The whole place would be filled up. And then they're going to, it's like, oh, did you forget how they preached? And it's like, oh, well, wait, yeah, what did you, yeah, because they're, they're, they're in a book now. And they're famous because they have the book of Ezekiel, the book of Daniel. Well, if they came back, but well, what they said was an uncompromising word that came from heaven. So basically, it's not, Jesus had the, the king of all. How many followed him at the end? Maybe three. Three went all the way to the cross as heard. And 12 of them actually walked with him all the time. He was asking to have more people to listen to him and teach them, but only 12 were called to, 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 to do the gospel. So, but in John 6, 6, 6, we all know this because I've said it before about, but he, he called them disciples because anyone that was following him and listening to his words was being disciples. So, disciple, discipline follows. But they were no longer disciples anymore when they... Decided not to eat him and drink him. Right. They're like, how can I eat him and drink him? This guy's nuts. So they all left. Yeah. So they're no longer disciples because disciples are disciplined followers. I believe disciple came out of discipline. Discipline to the words. Yeah. 
to it. Oh, and it's yeah. like, who's your mentor? I don't have mentor. I have the Holy Spirit. Yes. I have. I have <laughs> the Holy Spirit. It's like mentor. This whole system and these things that we get in our minds has to be plucked out. And then he said this. And the king and the guests and the wedding garments, he said to them, friend, how you come here not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Oh my God, I thought they, I thought they wouldn't notice. <laughs> I thought they wouldn't notice. Then said the king to his and we know that the wedding garment is his blood for us. And we know that it's the full armor of God. Yeah. And we know that it's his righteousness, but we have to have his breastplate on it. And if our heart gets wicked, there's nothing... The righteousness is gone. It's his, it's, it's his salvation. So it's Christ we put on. The helmet, the whole armor of God is Christ. So we put on Christ, make no provisions for the flesh. So we have to have Christ on to go in the wedding garment. We, and then he's making an understanding of, you got to look like him. Hallelujah. Notwithstanding all things, watching, waiting, Acts where it says, be, be worthy to suffer for his name. Luke 12 goes to about bestowing fruits. He talks about your soul, and I have much goods laid up, and let's eat and drink and be merry. And, but God said unto him, Thou fool, tonight your soul shall be required of thee. And so he says, So what thou layest up treasure for himself, and not rich toward God. And then it goes all the way down here to uh, 33. That is chapter 12 in Luke. And I'm going to go to verse uh, 33. Little flock, it's his good pleasure to give us the kingdom. He says, Sell all you have, give alms and provide, neither bags, wax, or treasure, um, not old, a treasure in heaven that fails not, where no thief comes and approach, where your treasure is, there your heart is. Also, it's all about our hearts. And he says, Let your loins be girded and your lights burning, that you sh that yourselves like unto men, that this is another part of being worthy. Right here it is. Men that wait. For their, what do you wait? We talked about that before. You're a waiter, right? You're serving him. You're not. People consider serving this. I make my schedule. I'm going to block out. I'm going to go do this on Sunday, do this, this, and I'm serving the Lord. No. Waiting on the Lord is always be ready to serve him. Wherever, whenever you are. So in your relationship with him. It's like you go to a fine dinner and the waiter in a good restaurant, they don't leave three feet unless they got to the kitchen, but... They don't run and try to get my, uh, you know, as many tables they get, numbers gained. They, they are basically concerned on that one table, mm -hmm. and they're waiting there. And basically, there's probably food runners. They're really just waiting there and then giving the mess up. They're waiting, and they're watching. Mm -hmm. And right when the customers are, they, they bite or and the food and it doesn't seem like they like it. Right away, they're isn't there anything wrong with the, with the with the food? And yeah, there's this is cold. And, Oh, no problem, sir. And they take it. And, and they say, they look there, and they're about back and wait. And they're looking at the drink, and uh, it's almost done. Oh, can we refill that for you? That's waiting. <coughs> Not what we call waiting. We call religious as I, I, I do this and I do that. And I give God one hour here. And, no, it's a lifestyle, and that's yes, what makes yes. us worthy. It's a lifestyle of being with Him. And it says, So wait on the Lord. We'll return from the wedding. And he cometh and knocketh, and they open immediately. Blessed, whom that Lord of the servant come and find him watching. Watching, right? Waiting. Watching. And we're like watching for things. But all of us want to wait. We're, we're watching like this. What's on YouTube? What's the channel now? What's it? Five blue moons. Five red moons. Whatever they are. Blood moons. And this and that. He's coming soon. Like all of that. And you're not expecting any relationship with him. No oil's coming. It's like all this end time Fear is coming on. Yeah. Oh, this. Oh, I think that's the Antichrist. Oh, no. It wasn't Obama. It was, it's Trump. He's the Antichrist. No, no. It's Putin. It's going to be Putin for sure. Honestly, the minute he's there, you'll know it. What are you worried about? If you're in a relationship with him. He said, when the son of perdition sits in the temple as he is God, you'll know it. Because God is in your heart. He's not going to let you be deceived. So we're doing all these religious things, worshiping Israel, trying to bless Israel in our own strength. And, and doing all these things, worshiping a nation that God is, is, is worshiping the creation, actually. Because God made Israel, and He made us, and He made America, too. We can't worship anything made by His hands. That's right. We worship Him. That's right. So it says, and bless the servant, so, and He says this, shall find them watching, verily I say to you, that gird Himself, and make them to sit down at meat. And I will come, 
and I will serve them. So, when it's time, we serve God and watch and wait, and then we sit down at the Mary Supper, and He serves us. Jesus. He said to be the greatest in the kingdom of God is to be the servant of all. Jesus came to serve and not to be served right. and give his life for a ransom. God never changed. He's the same first ever. And if we want to look like him, we have to become a servant. But we like to become servant in false humility and false love where everyone sees it. False fruits. But when you want, when you don't want to do something, that's your cross. I don't, oh, that guy's the nest. Go love him. God said, go buy him dinner. Oh, no, no. can I go with that person? It's a nice person. I get along with him. It's not about buying the dinner. It's about your cross. But in religion, we do, okay, I'm going to do that. Okay, I took this person out to eat, or I did this. And did, but that's not serving him, because did you do what, what the Bible says, by the letter or by the Spirit? And you know that the good man of the house had known, and then goes, we talked about this, so I'm going to jump all the way down. Blessed is the servant of the Lord that when he comes, shall find him doing. He doesn't say what. We should already know what to be doing. Right here, it says this. Blessed is the servant. Okay, let's just back it up to verse 42. And then Peter said, Lord, speak of the parable to us, even us or to all. Like, is this just for us or all? Peter was always like a... <laughs> Peter was always like, can I sit on your right hand? No. Can I do this? No. Peter's like, oh, wash my whole body. He's like, he couldn't even... He was the first guy to deny him, right? Anyway, so then Peter's like, always like, oh, I left all that. What do I get, Lord? He's always, who's the greatest in the kingdom? Like that Peter. He's always wanted to... And he's like, now he's asking this. Peter's like, right here, Peter, Peter said to him, speak it to us. He says, it's got to be just for us, because he's the elite, right? Peter and the elite. And to us and not to And then Jesus says this. Or even to all. And the Lord said unto him, who is that faithful and wise steward? Whom is the Lord shall make ruler over his household, to give him their portion of meat and due season. Blessed is that servant whom when I shall find him coming, shall find him doing. So today's reminding us about staying worthy. Not in the works of the flesh. You guys know what it is. Of a truth I say unto you, that he will make him ruler over all that he has. But if that servant says in his heart, the Lord delays coming, and he shall begin to beat his manservant, Come a jerk, have no fruits of the Spirit, as we're saying, and to eat and drink with drunk, start hanging out with the world, living like his old self. The Lord of that servant will come on a day when... Because why, why will he come on a day when he's not looking? Because he's not looking. He's still coming on that day. It's only a day to those that aren't looking, to those that are, are starting to drink and do and all do all those things with the, with the world. And the hour when he's not aware. Because if you're serving the Lord, you know exactly what he's doing. He's getting up to go to the bathroom. Sir, let me get your chair. He's coming down from heaven, right? We call it waiting on the Lord religious. Oh, I did two mission trips this year. And I went, and, you know, I did an outreach last month. And um, I went, and, you know, and that's how we, it, it, it's all about. And that's like, that's, that is, you sh all those things probably should happen in serving the Lord. But it's about relationship, about following Him. You don't understand what I'm saying? And when you give a cup to, to the least of these, it's already God leading you to do that. But you can go and get, get a jail. Uh, oh, I'm going to the jails. And then the jail says, well, you can't pray in the Holy Spirit because this happened to us and you can't do that. I'm like, I ain't preaching this jail. Goodbye. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, I'm going to do it in whatever because the scriptures say you got to go to the... God, I did this. And they just say, oh, yeah, you did that too, but it wasn't, you, you know, you never knew, I never knew you. It's a difference. I mean, you can do the same thing in Christ and do the same thing out of Christ. One has fruits of eternity. One has nothing. Empty. Dead works. So we don't want to be just doing all that stuff and be dead about it. We want to have life in it. The Lord of that servant will come. And then our, he's not a warrant, cut him asunder. And appoint him the portion with the unbelievers. So believers, he'll say, you'll be an unbeliever. Because you can't be an unbeliever. There, okay. There's no way for you to cut your portion with the unbelievers unless you, if he's considering you as a believer, right? Because you got to be, a, if, 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 if in his heart, a servant of God, you wouldn't serve someone you don't believe. We, we might serve the devil unthinkably because we were serving ourselves and it's like, 
and unbelief. But to serve God, you really got to believe. Because then you got to listen to what he's saying. Yeah. And that servant knew, knew his Lord's will. And then he knew his Lord. He called him Lord right here. This is heavy. But we want to just think about what Paul said. I'm, 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 I'm saved by faith. Good. And the Lord will be and prepared not himself. Prepared himself. Oh, I thought God. Well, it's really the Holy Spirit preparing us. But it's our surrender to allowing the process, right? So neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. But knew him not, will commit such things as strife. So then it goes on, that he's sending a fire on the earth, and they will, if it be already kindled. Matthew 24, 37-51. I'm going to skim through this. There'll be two in the field. We know about all that. And then this it goes. And they talk, therefore, be ready when the hour where the Son of Man comes. And he says, Who is that faithful and wise servant whom when the Lord has made him rule over household? I mean, you said, so this is another, uh, the other one was in Luke. Now this, blessed is the servant, find him come and find him doing. So we'll find out what are we supposed to be doing? We know. What are we doing? What are we supposed to be doing? Whatever we are doing be led by the Holy Spirit and that makes us worthy. It's obedience. That's right. The key to it all is obedience. Verily I say unto you, but not obedience to the letter. You can be going to jails, going to prisons, going on mission trips, reading your Bible, having Bible study, and be a maverick and and, and, and disobedient to the Holy Spirit. That's, right. That's what I'm trying to pe right. have people to understand. Why how come you don't do this? Because I'm not doing it because you think I need to do it. Mm -hmm. It's gotta be the Holy Spirit. Really, it's not how much we do, it's how much we do that he that he tells us to do. Amen. Shall make us ruler, and you 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 would you would be blowing your mind how much little he does tell you to do, in a sense of what we think we need to do to, because that you put yourself under your own law. And shall make him ruler over his goods and and his heart, and the Lord shall delay his coming. Okay, we said okay. Well, and he calls him here asunder, appoint him a portion with the hypocrites. Before he said. It's probably why I picked this. He called them a portion with unbelievers. Now he's calling them with hypocrites. So a hypocrite would be, I'm, I'm a Christian, but I'm not, right? I love, what's a hypocrite? Someone that says he does things, but he doesn't really do them. Now let's go to Ephesians, and we're almost finishing. Everyone can stand up if you want to. Just to let you think I'm done when I got around another 30 minutes. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Now let's see. Now let's go. And the, to back up Jesus' things, and we say, because Paul and all that, let's go to Ephesians 4, 1 through 3. Therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you, that you walk worthy of the vocation where you're called, with all lowliness and meekness. So that's all. So I'm not, the only way to do is in humility to the Holy Spirit. With long suffering, forbearing one another in love, Endeavoring to keep the unity of the faith. So when you fight for peace, I'm not talking about the false peace where the word comes. Fight for peace like someone wants to argue with you and you're like, no. Nope. Fighting can be you putting your flesh under submission and letting them think they're right and taking up your cross yes. and denying yourself and saying it's not worth it. Because we begin to get into fights where we take our peace and God's like, I never told you to fight that. You go, walking and being worthy of Him is knowing when not to cast your pearl before swine. Yeah. So you need to know who and when and what. You need to be in a relationship. Mm -hmm. You're waiting on God. God says, say this. And then when you do that, oh boy, they'll drop their stones and they'll go. Mm -hmm. They'll come back later, but it like <laughs> they'll drop them and all of a sudden, man, boom, 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 boom. It's like, oh my God. Dropping your stone is getting a block. When you say something by the Spirit of God and then they just block you, that's mm -hmm. dropping their stones and going, I love it. It happens all the time. It gives me more room for hungry people. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Colossians 1, 9-11. For this cause, we also, since the day we heard, do not cease to pray for you. So praying is another thing to be. That you might be filled with all the knowledge and the wisdom and spiritual understanding. That you might walk worthy of the Lord unto pleasing. So when people say to someone, oh, you're worthy, it's something in my stomach was like, wait, are you in false grace? Because you're saying, if this person is feeling that they're not worthy, they need to repent. Because the minute you're repenting in the blood, you feel worthy. 
Because He's worthy. But when you're apart from Him, you're not worthy. You get it? It's like, I'm worthy because of Him. And when I do things on my own, I'm not really worthy. And that's why I feel that. So let me get back in Him because He's worthy makes me worthy. But at the end, I need to be in Him. So when He says, who is worthy? To and I'm in Christ. And I'm one with my... That the two shall become one. And I'm not talking about Christ, uh, the, 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 these two that are getting married here on the earth. But I'm talking about Christ in the church. So, Father and Lord Jesus Christ, we are bound to thank God always, brother, that we meet because we, we grow exceedingly in, in love of everyone toward each other abounded. So that we ourselves glory in the churches of God for our patience and faith and, and your persecutions, tribulations. And I can't glory in half the thing, things. God wants us to glory. Like, wow, yeah, that, that church in Colorado and the house is like, whoa, they're... they're they're a church in Philadelphia. They're on. I, I can't. It, it's like, you know what ha ha happens to me? Like, people are like, oh, you're a Christian. I go, like, no, I don't go to church around here anymore. No, because you, 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 we're ashamed. Why would we be ashamed if they were moving in the power, casting out demons, becoming worthy, and being filled with oil? We'd be like, yeah, that's, those are my brothers. You'd be like, I don't know, because I don't really know them. I heard what's going on, and this guy's doing this, and they're living for the world, and they're doing this, and they have... You know, bringing doctors in and business classes, and 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 you know, teaching you how to uh, to fill your 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 belly with Babylon, and like, wait a second, I don't know them, you know, no, but I know them. That's the church God wants to see. You can go anywhere in the world, and you can find a remnant everywhere in the world, and they're not always in big buildings, and and they don't always have a lot of money, but they're meeting together, and they're sold out for the gospel. They're picking up their cross. And ourselves and the glory of the churches for your patience and faith and persecution and tribulations you endure, which the manifest token of the righteous judgment of God, that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, for which you also suffer. So really you'll suffer for this kingdom. And what, what you suffer for you become worthy of. If I suffer for Christ, I'm worthy of Christ. Right? And because He suffered for us, made us worthy. Get it? Seeing the righteousness thing which God recompensed tribulation, them that trouble you. And to you our troubled rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven in the mighty angels, with His mighty angels in the flaming fire, taking vengeance to all them that know not God. And they that obey not the gospel. Right there's another key. Obeying the gospel mm -hmm. makes us worthy. Of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power, when He shall come and be glorified in His saints, that's in us, and to be admired in them, ooh, he says he's going to, the world's waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God to appear, <coughs> that, that the world will, right here, it is, and, when he shall come and be glorified in his saints and be admired in all them that believe. Because of our testimony among you was believed in that day. Wherefore also we pray always for you that he would count you worthy of this calling. So what, what are we all called to do? To be worthy. What are we all called to do? I want to be an apostle. What are we all called to do? There's something else, right? What is it else? We're all called to bear fruit. Every one of us. What's my calling? I say, bear fruit. You know, God will tell you what you are. Everyone wants, because you know what? We've made in religion something better than what it is. What's better than being a son of God? There's no higher thing. And what's better to become a servant of all is to be the greatest in the kingdom of all. So, we know that to serve Him is to be worthy of Him. So as we serve Him, not in our capacity of our religious mindsets, but in the capacity of obedience and humility and denying ourselves with the cross makes us worthy. And the only thing that can do that is the Holy Spirit. But ultimately, He needs someone. Okay, last little thing. This is us. We're dead. You ever see one of those, um, um, I think maybe a scarecrow kind of thing? It's like, Filled with things, it's like a, a mannequin thing, you know. And then God's, we're the bride, it's a woman, let's just make it a thing. 
you know, it's a big doll. It's like, okay, this is most of the false grace says, hey, we're the doll, and we're like, just like, pick me up, Jesus, and use me. And then it's like this, okay, and here she is, she wants to dance, right? <coughs> So he goes and picks us up. He does everything. He picks us up. He has to bend over, do this, do that. And then he moves. He's like that puppet, but you know, it's, it's, it's a thing. The legs are just like this. And you're dancing with him, but it's like he's doing everything. That's what false grace thinks. You're dead, and you're still dead, and you're expecting because of what everything he's doing that you just be, be worthy. And then he's like, no. Here's Jesus, our, our husband, and here's us. We're, we're living, we're not dead. And he says, because it's a, it's a dance to eternity, right? And he takes her hand, he wants to do, you know, when you, when you get married, you get, right, you do that. You, what, have you ever seen a wedding? You dance with the groom. So, he, he's the lead, right? Because someone's the lead, right? You dance, there's a lead, and there's a... So his foot goes back, your foot goes forward. He's not taking your foot and moving it back, and then, oh, but I'm doing everything he wants me to do. You know, he's doing everything for you. And then it's like, and you move this way, and you're moving in sync. Right. And what God's looking for is an in sync relationship with him taking the lead. Right. And that's how you got in picture. So you learn how to dance with the Holy Spirit in relationship. You just don't go there and know how to dance, right? Dancing with the stars or whatever. Well, he's the star. And he's the professional dancer that they're picking, and you're just a dying star. So, now, you don't learn how to dance with sin, but the more you spend time with your partner, and the more you have fellowship and relationship, what do you end up doing? You, you're in sync. You're stepping. And then all of a sudden, then you have no, wow, did you see that move? You see that move? Wow. Oh, look, he just raised the dead. It wasn't me that raised the dead, but I did it because Jesus. But he just raised the dead, but I was dancing to him. Oh, did you just walk? Oh, Shane's getting out on the boat. He's going to walk on water. Well, it's not really me walk, walking on water, but I am because I'm not sinking, right? But it's, it's because of him. It's my faith in him. Peter didn't have nothing, but it was Jesus he was looking at. And he said, Amen. Taking vengeance to all them that know not God. And obey not the gospel of Jesus, who shall be punished everlasting destruction, where came the glory in the saints, and admire all them that believe, because of their testimony, in that day. Wherefore we pray always that God would count us worthy of his calling to fill all the good pleasure of his goodness. Through work of faith. Through work of faith. There it is again. There's another key thing. What's a work of faith? God, don't let him lie to you, because you won't be ready. And with power. That the, there's another. When there's work of faith, there's power. When there's work without faith, there's no power. That the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and you in Him. Oh, that's so deep. According to the grace, not salvation grace, to the grace of our God, Lord Jesus Christ. The grace of God makes us look like Him. Father, we thank You for this word today. Father, let it go sink deep into us, God. Help us to have this last dance with you, God. Help us to move in you, to have our being, not just to read it, to actually live it, God. Make us pray. We pray, God, that we be found worthy, God, that you make it easy, God, to give up the things, Lord, that we think we need, that we think we need to do, God. And we ask you, Father God, to rule and reign in our hearts and minds and to let us be established in this gospel, to be established in the church, God, as you do mighty things on the earth, Father, we thank you that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Father, we're able to see the wheat because they bow down in the harvest time. The tares, the prideful, they're, they're starting to stick out more and more. We know those that are yours, God, and we're going to follow the real bride of Christ. We're going to move in power, God. We're going to hear messages, and we're not going to beat ourselves up. We're going to rejoice in the truth, and we're going to come and say, God, I can't do this without you. Here's my heart. Here's my mind. Let's dance. In Jesus' name. Amen.